it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a great Friday. It's it's beautiful out. It's also really hot here. Is it hot where you are? It's stifling here. And Frida down here is hot and she's a hound and she doesn't like the heat. So welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a great day. And we're gonna talk about something we haven't talked about before, but it's kind of an interesting story. Some of you guys are really into some of these missing persons cases, and this is a story about a 20, almost a 20 year old cold case that has been solved, and it was through the help of social media and TikTok. This is maybe the first time TikTok has been used for good, just kidding. Um, and a sister's plight and drive to get justice for her sister who disappeared in 2001. So today was the culmination of all of her hard work with an arrest in this case. So back in 2001, Elizabeth, Alyssa Turney went missing and she was a high school girl who was 17 years old. She was living with her stepfather and younger sister, Sarah, following the passing of her mother and when she went missing it was May 17th 2001 it was the last day of her junior year and she attended Paradise Valley High School in Arizona she had been super excited apparently for the summer and she was going to parties and eventually Michael Turney calls the Phoenix police department and says that he went to pick up Aly Alyssa from her last day of school around 11 a.m., took her out to lunch, and he said that he got into an argument with her and her desire for more freedom. And when they returned home, Alyssa was angry and went to her room. And then he said he left at 1 p.m. to run errands and pick up Sarah. And when he returned home, there was a note that had been left behind saying that she was on the run from California and she was gone. And for years, the investigators in Arizona treated this as a missing persons case. And so they assumed that Sarah was a runaway. It was treated as, or that they treated, they assumed that Alyssa was a runaway. They had treated this as a runaway case. But it was a few years later in 2008 when they realized that some of the, they got new information about Michael Turney, about Alyssa, and they realized that this was not a missing person case. And instead, they needed to consider this as foul play. So Dateline actually did a piece on this back in June. It's been featured on Inside Edition. And since 2001, no one has seen Alyssa. So she ends up disappearing. Michael says she's run away. But back in 2008, they start interviewing people connected to Alyssa, like her friends and her classmates and her school teachers. And a different story is depicted of Alyssa. And it is one of Alyssa having some deep reservations about her stepfather and claims of her stepfather touching her inappropriately and not feeling safe at home. In fact, in, an, in a podcast with Sarah, one of her friends, said that Alyssa was afraid that if anything happened to her, it would be her stepfather. My Something I feel like my mom could have, but she, she was probably scared of what Mike would have done to us or me if she would have said something about the abuse that was going on over there. Yeah, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. There's a lot of people that feel that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, you were mentioning earlier that your mom would almost like not let her go home. Yeah, my, my I remember my mom and Mike getting into arguments over the phone and, you know, no, she's going to stay one more night. No, I'm going to keep her for the week. I'll bring her back on Sunday. And, right. you know, he would be like, well, she needs to do that. No, she doesn't. Good for your mom. Good for your mom. <laughs> she's man. staying here. Um, I've got her. Yeah. I'll take care of her. Well, and what kind of things did Alyssa say that would make her react that way? Um, that that he was touching her and doing inappropriate things with oh, her. That's so hard. Yeah. That's insane. And I mean, I know she told Miss Boardman too. Yeah. But. 
So in 2008, acting on this new information, they execute a search warrant at his house. Alyssa had lived with her half-sister and stepfather. And according to Sergeant Cox, who was the uh, detective on the case, they found multiple videotapes dating back to the 1980s. Uh, surveillance, surveillance footage from around the house, but they did not find any videos from the day that she disappeared. They also found 19 high caliber uh, weapons, two handmade silencers, a van filled with gasoline cans, 26 uh, handmade devices that you put with uh, powder and nails, like basically pipe, B-O-M-B-S's, and a stockpile of other things in his house and a, man and a manifesto. So they basically end up a writing, it was a 98 page manifesto called The, Di the Diary of a Mad Mad Martyr. And he ends up getting charged with 26, having 26 of these pipe BOMBs. And he takes a plea and he's sentenced to 10 years in prison. So following his, while he was in prison, they told Sarah that they would, this was just the tip of the iceberg. This was going to allow them more time to research Alyssa's disappearance but he remained a primary suspect and they anticipated that they would be able to do a charge related to her disappearance before he ever got out, but that didn't happen. And when he was released in 2018, Sarah started to get panicked because she was concerned that her father was still free and she believed that her father was the person that made Alyssa disappear permanently. She grows concerned that she will never receive justice for her sister and she then turns to social media in order to build interest into Alyssa's case and to make sure that her story stayed in the media as well as the public interest. So not letting her memory die. She then in May of 20, so she starts a podcast in 2019 where she outlined a ton of the details about her father, about the case, about her sister. She interviewed Sarah's or Alyssa's fa biological father. She had Sarah's friends come on. She had forensic psychologists come on. She uploaded tape of her conversations with authorities where you could hear her literally pushing them for information, you know, getting them to do things. And throughout this time, it felt as though they just didn't have enough. They had enough reason to believe, but they didn't have enough evidence. And because they didn't want it in one podcast, the officer told the detective told her that they really don't want to get this wrong because they really have, you know, only one shot to try him and they need to make sure they have all of the evidence available. In May of 2020 officers in, in May of 2020 detectives in Arizona told Sarah that she needed more media exposure. So Sarah decided she was going to try TikTok. She had started the podcast with good success. It hadn't gotten the reach that she had hoped. She took to TikTok and somehow the algorithm worked completely in her favor because within weeks, she amassed hundreds of thousands of followers and to date has almost a million people that are following this where she has shared details from short home videos and interviews and all kinds of clips from her podcast. I'll let you hear a few of these things here. It's not so. trouble dad how do i do that because that freaking asshole mike he comes he looks and he goes that's illegal you can't he can't do that and i was like that's my dad still there's signs posted all in the office i was like like my dad's gonna do anything i was like it's my first job my dad's video camera me he's like so that's illegal tell him not to do that i was like he's a prick hate which, which one's mike the one i was talking to you no the one i don't know the one that drives that nice ass mustang let me drive. Which one? In the store with three things, she'll forget two of them, or at least one of them. She's been this way since she was a child. Her learning disorder 
inability to recall information, short-term memory loss, is not restricted to school. That's the way she is for the rest of her life. She's that way at home, seven days a week. I have to deal with this. It's just my own form of retardation. I just got... Are you leaving? Hit the red button. Why? Hit the red button now. I don't want to. I don't record. Hit the red button. Yeah. I'm recording. So, as you can see, Alyssa was followed with cameras by her stepfather, Michael. And it almost seems as though Michael didn't want a secret to get out because in one of the videos you saw her and Michael fighting with a little Sarah trying to video record it and then she says dad is a P-E-R-V-E-R-T. Then you see him following her to her first day of work. What you did not see is that after, before she came out he was literally filming every single thing that happened like he was following her around the store while she worked in at this fast food place as though he didn't want anyone to have any access to her because she might tell them the secrets. She was never seen again and because of the push that Sarah has made on her TikTok, the show Dateline came out in June. She was featured on Inside Edition and prosecutors were reviewing the file in June and that's what they told they released that information publicly. Well, yesterday there was a humongous announcement. The county district, the county attorney in Phoenix announced formal charges against Michael Turney for second degree M-U-R-D-E-R -E in the disappearance and passing of Alyssa Turney. Now, in a press conference, the district attorney actually thanked Sarah for her resilience and her drive to seek justice for her sister and that it was they thanked her for this because it was with her help that they finally were able to get this case solved here's what they said to Alyssa's sister Sarah Turney your perseverance and commitment to finding justice for your sister Alyssa is a testament to the love of a sister. Because of that love, Alyssa's light has never gone out. And she lives on in the stories and photos that you have shared with the community. This passion you have and have demonstrated for her during your journey is something that will keep Alyssa's memory alive forever. And while this is just the first step of many seeking justice for Alyssa. Shortly after the formal announcement, Sarah actually took to her Twitter account to let people know that her, her father had been arrested after years of her fighting for justice, of her releasing tons of information, going to the media, going to social media, using TikTok, and gaining a humongous momentum. All of that effort, all of that time paid off because now he has been arrested and he is going to be, go, he will go to trial. Now the county attorney would not release any information at all from the grand jury. So there's not a lot of information about what evidence they have at this point that connects him to Alyssa's disappearance. However, they do say that they feel like they have enough to bring justice and serve justice for Alyssa. Sarah obviously was very emotional following, following everything and she uploaded a TikTok where she was crying as she looked at people like reacting to this arrest.
She also took to her podcast where she thanked everyone, everyone that had supported her over the year, that had expressed interest in Alyssa's story, and that kept Alyssa's story alive. She was emotional, she was thankful, and she was very much uh, grateful to everyone that had become her friend, her family, and had made her feel like something could be done for Alyssa. Obviously, it will be a long process between now and the time that a trial would be over or if he pleads out, but the county attorney did say that at any point she could upgrade the charges if the evidence suggests more. I can't imagine what it might feel must feel like for Sarah after all of these years to finally have what she wanted, justice for her sister. And I also can't imagine the overwhelming like flood of emotions she must feel because the charges in concrete proof mean that this finding Alyssa is not a possibility anymore. Now, they did mention that part of the challenge with this case is because Alyssa has never been found. These types of cases, which are considered no body, would be hard to try. And for that reason, it took this long. They had to go through all of these steps and unfortunately, they still have not located Alyssa. At this point, I will say it's pretty amazing what the love and dedication and tenacity of a little sister can do to help bring awareness to her sister, to help bring justice to her sister. And I'll be eager to see what what happens moving forward with this case and we'll continue to follow along as we go uh, to provide you guys with updates. So. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Are you impressed with what Sarah has done? Are you surprised that it resulted so quickly in a charge to her father? And what do you think about how social media can be used in order to seek justice when you are a looking to, how do you, how do you feel about people now using social, how do you feel about people now using social media to get justice for people, loved ones that don't have a voice. I think it's pretty fantastic. And I think Sarah is a true hero. All right, you guys, I'll be back later with more. Bye.